All right, well, so welcome back for another episode of Tactical Tuesday. This week, we're going to have a discussion on hidden initial placement of units. John and, Ke and Keith shared their game with us before, where it had OBA, which was kind of hidden, and a couple of German units, which actually didn't really come into play, but were also hidden in the initial setup of the Germans. What we're going to cover now is John's next scenario that he plays, I reviewed, and I said, hey, this entire thing has got a hidden initial placement. All the Germans are hidden. So when the Americans come on, there are no Germans on the board. So he's got to find them. He's got to he's got to find out where they are, and and he's got to avoid them or whatever like that. It's a very simple scenario in terms of three buildings need to be controlled by the Americans by game end. He can get there by assault move advance, assault move advance, assault move advance. I mean, he can get there in five turns doing that. But the Germans are going to be hidden throughout pretty much the entire board. So he's got like four and a half, five squads, you know, of equivalent that are hidden on the board. Most of them have squads. So, but a couple machine guns, a couple leaders, you'll see how it develops there. But what I like about it is what I liked about the previous scenario that John had is that the hidden initial placement throws a a key of uncertainty in the game. It's like, where do I move here? Because he might be able to shoot me if I don't get protected. Do I go there? You know, so you don't know where the guy might be hidden. And in this one, all of them are hidden. So the Americans really don't know where where the axis are going to be in this scenario, which means you can really do some crazy and wonky setups, really pulling out all the stops in terms of trying to manipulate your opponent to go where he wants to go. I really liked how John pulled the opponent into where he wanted to, him to bring. He put a guy up front, baited him. Whether that was Keith's normal attack doesn't really matter, but the Americans came in, got hammered. He pulled back and got hammered again. So um, if you can arrange that, that's very difficult to do. If you can do that in your games, you control the tempo of the game. So therefore, the game is in your control at that point you know if you're if you're out of control if you don't really have a focus then you're only reacting to situations and you don't want to be reacting to anything in squad leader you want to be the one setting the tempo so let's see how hidden initial placement can be used in the next scenario it's from beyond the beaches i think so most of you might not have it but it would be very interesting to see this scenario, you know, performed by a number of individuals with different setups. I think it would be really great. And the analysis of those setups, I think, can lead to really good discussions. So anyway, Mark stopped by for today's session. Uh, pretty light session, but we had really good conversation, really good thoughts. And um, enjoy the presentation. So I guess we get started here since at least we have three now. And... Um, I just thought of some interesting situations simply because of the last scenario where we went over, where John went over most of it, or introduced the initially placed um, units. And I think we can go over the different strategies uh, where you might want to put some units. As, well, in this particular scenario, the same thing kind of applied to the other scenario because you're, you're looking at a uh, much weaker force in terms of firepower. And, uh, and you'll notice a difference here, and we'll go over it, is the, uh, the, boat, the, is the hedges are new to, well, in this, this case, this is the, like you said, the Beyond the Beaches or something like that. It's one of the expansion right. packs. So it introduces yeah. hedges, which essentially is a line of sight blockage. Uh, if you're not adjacent to it, you can't, you can't pass LOS through the, heck, the hedge hex side to a hex beyond the hex that the hex side touches so like yep. f7 can't see c9 but f7 can see d8 so it's pretty much the way it is but bocage works a little differently really differently in asl and they also leave out uh, a couple other rules that will that will set the stage to make it different in this game than it would in a in an ASL game so and that's right. the discussion where we talked about is the difference between ASL and SK is the difference is going to be 
quite readily noticeable in this scenario. To somebody who's coming in from, yeah, because I remember, because as I said, I uh, one game, one ASL game that I played was the uh, one of the, um, I think the journal or action pack scenarios, which was the counterattack at Keratin. And, um, and there was like, you know, there were obviously the hedges in your Normandy there, and yeah, there were the, the bocage was everywhere. And it's like, okay, <laughs> it's like, yeah. again, another example of kind of bluffing my way through it. It's like, oh, okay. you, they, so I, he made you play bocage? Oh my yeah, God. I, Half the yeah. ASL players don't understand Bocage. Well, you know, hey, I won, so. <laughs> Jeez, that's probably because he didn't understand the scenario. He probably didn't well, use it properly. Really, the Bocage is really only kind of at the beginning of the game, you know, because the way the maps are set up. Oh, kind of okay, the and then you kind of work your way out of the Bocage, okay. Right, you work your way out of the Bocage, and I was I was actually pulling off a reasonably skillful rear guard action. Oh, nice. That, like, back nice. up, the person are actually backing up enough that and I got a lucky shot on my on my hidden any tank gun. Took out one of his gun. Took out one of his probes. And and then and then he just gave up when my sniper took out his martyr. I think he had a C martyr crew that he forgot about. And the sniper I just got my sniper activation roll. Took him out. And that was it. <laughs> he yeah. said that's it. <laughs> Very interesting. I was noticing uh, uh in this one of course one more hedgerow as you see in the upper left hand corner. It actually has the sniper value. I, I yeah, don't know, I know. where the yeah. hell that's coming from, but but this this is it's a starter kit scenario, and yet they have I don't know what the hell that is. Maybe it's just default. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, have... no clue, no clue. But so yeah. the looking at the victory conditions, and then the OBs will take a look at. There's five and a half turns, so that's six American turns, five yeah. German turns. So the American moves last which is different from the last game where the german who is the defender moves last with hip units right, so yep. this will be this will be the difference and distinction between the two uh scenarios so the americans Question. have seven yes um so last week i remember i distinctly went to vassal and clicked on it and it went right to the room and there were a couple of people talking and i didn't say anything and i left and now this week, for some reason, it seemed to want me to join the Discord channel before I went to you. So was that a mistake? It's um, ASL Discord. It wanted me to join it before I went to you. Is that bizarre? Why would Vassal care about Discord? Yeah, Vassal's got I, I, nothing to do with Discord. I'm not so sure. So somehow this just got in here and screwed with me, I think. Okay, no problem. Yeah. I'll yeah. Uh, play with it. <laughs> we don't see you in Basel yet. Um, yeah. Are, are, are you, yeah. Um, okay, I'll, let me play. I'll play. I'll talk me... to you in a while. Okay. Um, um, so, um, um, oh, uh, Mark, you just dropped out of the. I know, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I just jumped out just to see where he was. I'm jumping back right back in. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I don't All see right. him. I don't see him in the. Uh, it looks like he's just fallen out. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is. I mean, you don't have to go. They're independent. That's, yeah, they, yeah, they're, yeah. They're like, yeah. Why would why would one tell you to go to the other? I'm not sure where he where he even could be. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Maybe just a pop up window. He got confused with. It's all. It's all. It's all good. Okay. So well, here we have um, the seven Americans. Of course, there's only seven Americans. Two leaders, two support weapons. We've got um, essentially six half squads a full squad and some some machine guns uh actually there's an hmg and an mmg wow that's a, that's a lot of machine guns so yeah 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 the germans are certainly well armed for such a small group yeah that's pretty crazy that is um that, that could be pretty crazy so in terms of objectives uh, you need all three buildings so there's no two out of three you need all three buildings and you have to control them yeah so i think the american firepower if if it's such that you know they have a line of sight and with their range they don't have to go very far to get these buildings in range yeah so um you know typically the best the best position in my opinion for the americans would be to take the top side because if they go to G3, H3, or something like that, or maybe on the back side, I don't know if I'd go on the back side, but you might have to. Um, you can get essentially clear shots to all the buildings. Um, anything down on the G, the low G row, G9, G10, you're going to be shooting through 
uh, hindrances, which is going to increase those buildings, make them plus four, plus five buildings, which yeah. uh, can even with a twelve or sixteen firepower might make it might make it difficult. So, um, so <clears throat> the the Germans have to set up on the right side of the red line in the middle. So E hex row to the right, and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, the differences between the ASL rules and the SK rules makes it such that my suggestion that I'm going to have let me let me let me ask you what your suggestion in terms of the German setup would be, and then I'll then I'll go. Remember, everybody's hit. All the Germans are hip, so they're going to be right. out on their side. They're not going. No one's going to be known. Uh, you may set up hit. I guess you could just technically set up a guy, yeah, you know, but I, somewhere I would, I would. just to maybe bait him to go one direction or the other, but. Um, <clears throat> you can set up any unit's hip and so let me know what where you might set them up hip and why just to begin with just off the top of your head it doesn't have to be oh, anything all right. special so off the top of my head my initial impression would be um you know the four you know probably the you can drag them um my initial guess would be something along there um that way you can control all three buildings uh, or at least you can fire into all three buildings you can also hit um you can hit g3 and h3 i believe with the with the rules that are with the how um sk handles because i think that's the clear line of sight right Right. So you can, so anticipating that the Americans are going to want to get there, you're going to want to try to cover it. Um, you know, and then that's kind of probably fairly close to your probably Alamo position anyway. It's probably the last building you can probably get to. Um, you know that you probably, knowing that if the American wants to get there, you're probably going to try to slow him down, um, at least with a, um, you know, a couple of the half squads, I would say, would probably be, you know, hiding out. I mean, I don't know if you'd want to do something like. Um, let's see, because you will yeah, because the, well. Um, I would probably uh, give him light. That way he has, um, that way at least the light can try to cover some of these hexes here. If, he's tr if he wants to try to just barrel through the center, you probably at least want to try to cut him off. Um, a little bit, probably want to set up at least some sort of crossfire. There's too far forward in D5 and D6. And to, to the right of the red, E, e row, E row. Oh, 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 you've got to be, yeah, you got to be, oh, okay. Yep. You got to yeah. set up this way. All right. Um, yeah. So this is a bit, so this is a bit of a problem. I, I mean, the American might also want to try to come in this way just because it's obviously a little more cover. You know, if the German sets up fairly strong up in here, he doesn't have nearly as much cover. Right. Um, you know, at some point he's going to have to hit, you know, some of these hexes and they're going to be, and, and I'm assuming you've got wall advantage since you're set up there initially. There's no wall advantage. So I'm, so I'm assuming you claim the wall and, and if the, if the, if the, um, if the American moves into D3, he doesn't get the plus one or plus two for the hedge no there's no wall advantage oh there isn't I there's no there. wall advantage nope i thought um hold on let me i've actually interestingly enough i've got the beyond the beach head unless Ooh. unless it says something in beyond the beach head but in in here in the scenario special rules it doesn't show any wall yeah. advantage. well okay yeah because in the hedge rules it says uh yeah this is the hedge rules from beyond the beach head TM okay. of the hedge is plus one for fire, crossing a hedge hex side. Uh, hedge TM is N equal DC and mortar attacks, but would negate FFMO interdiction. 
head CM is not cumulative, blah, 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 but error burst can apply. If good order units on both sides are adjacent to a hedge X side, only the side with the advantage receives TEM from the adjacent enemy on the other side. The first okay. good order unit to share a hedge hex side with no good order enemy unit on the other side gains the advantage. Okay. 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 So there's the, there's the watered down version of the wall advantage rules right there. Right. There is something there. So in theory, in theory, these guys would at least set up having wall advantage. Right. Um, but down here, it would be more problematic. Um, you know, you'd have, yeah. Um, I suppose in theory, you've got to try to put, I mean, I don't know if you really want to try to put somebody in the building. I don't know. I'm not sure you would. Um, maybe one person there. I don't know. I'm not sure I'd do something like this. Um, right, because you have to ask yourself, what's the, what's the, what's the meeting machine gun going to be doing? Well, I mean, I mean, the medium machine gun, in theory, at some point, he's going to have to come across this way. Again, you can hit H3, uh, but you can't hit G3 from where you are. Right. Um, so that may not necessarily be the best spot from that perspective. If that's your concern, then it might actually make more sense to put him there. Um at least it's a kind of a rally point for it because eventually these squads are going to break. Right. Uh, these hassles are going to break and they're going to have to try to rally somewhere. Now they're probably going to be able to rally back, but if the Americans start infiltrating into this side, then that's going to make this difficult. Right. Gonna, no one's going to know. Yeah. No one's going to be rallying to G five. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you could start that direction, but then as soon as you reach F three, any Americans F three or F yeah, F three. Any Americans in D six will be seen, and so you can't make it to the G five building. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good point. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because they have to go through F four, and and they're not going to be able to get closer. Right. So that's right. yeah. So you're going to cut. Yeah. So they're going to get cut off. Um, so the only see the only thing I I see is a bunch of low crawls, back a hex or so. Remember, it's um. You know, you don't have a lot of firepower, and you know, the LMGs are, are there. Wow. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. I mean, this is kind of the first blush. I'm not entirely certain I like the setup, though. Um, as you said, I mean, there's there's certain, you know, I, I tend to go, okay, you know, you've got you've got two leaders. So that tends to imply two groups. Um, you know, at least in my mind, that's often how I kind of think if I'm on the defense. So you right. try to have like kind of two areas where you can be sure that the leader can at least get to somebody or they can get back to them. Right. Um, but again, the question is going to be is if these units break, you know, their closest cover well, the closest legal cover may not be that building, as you said, because the American, as soon as the American gets there, that's right. going to be cut off. Them. Right. Um, so they're going to be kind of hiding out in the orchard, um, which tends to imply that, you know, which tends to imply that the leader, you know, should be there. But. All right. I agree with you on that. I, I think putting the leader. And. Uh, yeah, the, with the wall advantage, it makes a little bit difference of the units up front. Um, the the problem the, the problem I see with, in my opinion, in my as the Americans, uh, you can either choose to put everybody on one side. I mean, that's a distinct advantage because remember you have six turns, and so yep. if you how far is the one two three four five six seven eight nine. It's ten hexes to to the J row buildings, so right. that's so nice assault, advance, 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 assault, advance, yeah. assault, advance, assault. That's that's you could reach J five in five turns. Yeah, and so what you'll need to do is slow them up. I think splitting the Americans, if the Americans split, uh, depending on your setup, of course, as 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 the as the ally or the as the axis. 
right. I think the Americans, if they split, are going to be. Yeah, it's it's a kind of problem. I think the best avenue of approach is obviously through the orchards for the Americans. Um, they can get to the orchards. Uh, the only spot they can get shot at is like oh, here. On a is that a two a two is about the only spot that they can get shot at from uh, a two minus two shot uh, because they could go you could have a leader you can have one two and now he's protected from that and then five and then six but if you're here behind the bocage you're going to get a, a good shot so they're probably going to go five here and then advance phase here and here to see what's going on so um the the i think the biggest the biggest problem with the with the uh, germans is um is when is when you intend to fire i think um i think i think your lmg down here is fine i think if right here because you need to cover that hex that'll be a two minus two and you'll leave one res well you're only gonna have well you might get two shots you might get yeah, you might shot get two shots. Yeah, but um, uh, I was thinking uh, initially where you would take the you would take the four because the four six seven is really not doing anything with the HMG. If you take the mm -hmm. four six seven, the medium machine gun, and you hip it here or you hip it here, right? And so you give him a nasty surprise as he comes in. Right, these guys will fire first, and then they they could either be stacked up like this. And these guys can just retreat back or break and then retreat back, right? And then um, he's going to expect he's going to expect your he's going to expect all your HMGs to be, all your machine guns to be in the buildings, right? So you yeah. could put a leader. Well, another thing you could put a leader here to block with like a two three seven, or just a, I don't know if you want to put the two three seven to block. You could probably just put the leader to block. But again, you want to rally units, so. Uh, after these units set up like this, you know, you could, I think you would want to wait. I would wait for point blank shots instead of long range shots, because once you go to long range shots, right? Yeah. Um, uh, well, you get the, your first and subsequent, depending on how he sets up off board, obviously. And uh, the same sort of thing back here, I might be more inclined to like put units like here well, other than covering this area over here, that's something that you can think about. Like you could put a unit down here as well, just and leave him, leave him hip. He's not firing until guys move into his hex and bounce back, and then you get to fire on them for for free, and they stop movement. Is if you do yeah. something like this, or even like this, well, yeah, something like this, and then when these when these guys, you know, if the six guys are coming down here, you're gonna be in trouble anyway. But it doesn't really matter because you've got all these guys. You can wait until he starts his movement over here. As soon as he knows where you all are, uh, it's game over. You have to. I think you have to keep most of your hit units hidden. But I like the idea of, of catching them when they come over the bocage, because if you're here, any shots at zero are going to be two even shots, pretty low. I, yeah. I, I'd wait for the point blank shots, and if you break, let's say you break him here, then he could actually route back there. Whereas if you're spread through here. Actually, you need a unit back on this one. Uh, let's let's just put the the two three seven. It doesn't really matter. I would put the HMG here um, instead of here. Although you've got this shot down this row here, I don't think it's as important mm -hmm. because it, what what it will do is this HMG will cover this entire bottom side. If you go one hex deep, he could fire one hex deep in the in the in the uh, in the wheat in the wheat fields or grain as players call them. Uh, he could fire one hex deep and be unaffected, and two hexes deep at moving units. So if okay. you got a unit moving in H9, that's going to be a six even shot. And he could fire here, and here, and here uh, on those guys here. Plus, he could fire up here. Uh, he might be able to fire at I2, H3. Uh, that might be a tight LOS, and so on and so forth. Uh, once the Americans get in the buildings, you don't have enough firepower to keep them out. You just don't, uh, and there's just too much open ground around. You actually don't want to go to the buildings. You want to fire at him going to the buildings because he has to move to the buildings, right? 
Uh, yeah. If anything, like these guys down here, when they break, uh, uh, like this unit here, well, technically his rod, he he would just low crawl and a low crawl and a low crawl and essentially use his body to block. These guys mm -hmm. could be body blockers. Uh, if you want to move another guy down there, that could be something like that. And because there's a lot of firepower here, and and what I would do is uh, when they move, because because you're dealing with six barrel units, right? Yep. If they don't break, if they're adjacent to you and they don't break, you're sustained fired all day long. You're just, if he if he moves there, you're first fired or your final protect or, or your your final fire, you sustain fire on these guys. Because you've got one, two, three, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got seven units. He has seven units. So right. if he breaks and you break, that's fine because you're going back and he still has to rally that unit to go forward. Uh, that's my idea about the MMG. Plus, you know, you've got You've got two eight firepower, no mi minus one shots. You know if these guys run away, right? And the, and the eight, and the other guy's hidden, right? Let's say something like this. Then the other guy's hidden. He might he might do, you know, he might assault move or whatever like that. But if he starts to move over, you know, and then he bounces into you, that's going to be an eight minus one. You just blast him eight minus one. Yeah. And then sure. in uh, say he doesn't move anybody else. Then you fire 12 plus 12 even after them, and so you just blast these units. And uh, you're going to be looking at an eight, eight plus one because they're assault fire. But uh, yeah, you just want to make sure they move. That's why I kind of like, you know, if you put them off to the side, you could put them up on the front, but he knows you're going to be on the front. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, there's certain there is kind of a certain advantage I I usually find to try to find a spot that's not obvious but still right, help, right. You know. Um, if these were four, if these were four six sevens, yeah, absolutely, put him, put them up front, yeah. because he's gonna be he's gonna be moving he's gonna be moving down here, because you can't, uh, right guy, this guy here yeah. can see that, yeah. you know, that's probably what you want to do, you should probably want to put a guy here, the LMG there, and an LMG here. <coughs> this LMG covers the only spot that he can cover there, and you could go two four seven over here as well, and then do that sort of thing. Because this yeah. LMG wants to fire here, right? And then yeah. this LMG wants to fire here, and that leaves only these spots right here to blow up. And uh, you know, theoretically, you can put the medium machine gun down here to stop this. I mean, that's yeah, could, I, that's, that's, that's very interesting on that sort of aspect there. But all the other spots, you know, he can be shot at. So that that's and if he gets yeah. shot, he's gonna be moving anyway, right? I mean, theoretically, I mean, hell, at that point. Especially over the orchard. I mean, you you could you could theoretically put your HMG, you know, like right here and just wait for him to move. And so that rate of fire, everything's dying. You just gotta you gotta hope you may pass from Rapture. But, uh, <laughs> it is, it's just, but uh, again, it's sort of like sort of like the other scenario where uh, once all your hip units are exposed, then because I think there's a lot of if this was four and a half turns. I mm -hmm. think it would be really crazy. The Americans would really have to bust ass to get to where they're going. Right. Since it's five and a half. Yes. Um, yeah, they have to yeah I don't think he has to bust ass so much. Again, he just assault, advance, turn one, yep. two, three, four, five. <laughs> you know, assault, advance, assault. He can just do that the whole way. And, right, uh, yeah. So, yeah. And as an American, I probably would. You know, just... just um, yeah, you know, just just because you know, I mean, why go any faster? You're trying to find them. You you want him to, to a right. certain extent, you want him to fire first because you want to know where he is. Right. And if you're salt moving, especially in all of the orchard and all the grain, which you're going to be in anyway, yeah. Then you're you're the the worst modifier you're going to have is zero, other than the minus one leader. That's going to be zero. If I assault move in any of the terrain, it's going to be zero. So he's going his best shot's going to be a four even shot on you. Which is right. kind of what you want anyway, right? I mean, that's a six for a morale well, check. His best shot's probably going to be, as you said, is, is you know, unless you unless he puts one of the you know, unless he puts the heavy machine gun forward, you know, that's a that's a six, you know, um, or twelve, um, you know, if he's got the light machine gun, it's a six at worst, um, you know, so, right? Since 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 you've only got one squad. You know the half squads are either going to be firing the LMGs or they're, or they're firing the, the MGs or they're, you know, firing their own inherent firepower. Right. You don't really have to worry about multiple attacks from that standpoint. So, right. 
the squad, yeah, is the only ones you really have to kind of worry about the sense of, all right, you know, he's going to whack me, you know, eight, you know, eight and one hex and eight or 12 and another hex because he's firing a Jason at me or something. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it's, um, um, but what do you think as the Americans? Would you think the Americans, I don't think the Americans, uh, depending on the like, if uh, given give like given your setup and my setup, which were pretty similar setups anyway. Uh, yeah. Let's just let's just put this guy on your setup. Let's just say let's just say you had him there for whatever reason, and this guy was yeah. up here, and I think this guy was up here. Yeah, uh, you had the light. Yeah, the light. The light was yeah. These two guys were flipped. You had the light. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because the light was light was trying to cover this. Um, you know, this light was going to try to be covering down in here, and instead, you had the medium there and the long and the and the heavy there. Yeah. Right. So I think okay. as the Americans, um, this is my this is my thoughts. As the Americans, I think you bring everybody. I think you bring everybody on one side. I think you just bring everybody on one side. A, it gives you your leadership. Uh, your nine minus one is going to be attacking. Your seven zero is going to be rallying. Yeah. You just stack everybody because. If they're split, you only have you only have this down here, and when you open fire with your units, like this guy gets a four, right? Then he's gonna get blasted, right? And so yeah. he's got to yeah. route pretty much in that direction, you know. And you're probably just gonna low crawl anyway to your leader, but uh, but then these guys have to tackle on these guys, and this LMG can keep this guy pinned forever or uh, DM'd forever, and then you only have two units doing the assault move advanced phase bullshit over here and uh once once he reaches the hmg you know say he gets over here now what are you looking at you look at a six even chart and that six morale is not going to do it and right. it's a it's a 12 plus it's a 12 plus five back at him and that's not going to do anything so i think splitting the guys up i mean I, I love to split my guys up i mean don't get me wrong yeah but uh i think in this point simply because the map is so small and the Americans have smoke anyway. Uh, you, uh, and I think there's just more. There's more cover right here. There's there's that there's this wall of, of things. Once you get in this hedge area, you've got the wall, yeah. so it's plus two versus nothing. You know, versus nothing over here. So once you once you assault, advance, assault, advance, and these guys break. They just low crawl back to somebody. Uh, yeah. These guys are gonna get blasted. So. Um, yeah, I, I like I say I don't, I'm not usually one to to. Of course, you can't go okay. half squads, pound them all like I, that. But that's that seems to be the safest route. What do you what do you think, Mark? What 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 pitfalls could you see in throwing all those guys up top? What would you what would you think is the German? These guys just start assault, move, and advance, and they get like right here, turn one or some bullshit like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what what do you what do you, what is turn one is this? What do you what do you do as the Germans here? Let's say you fired. Uh, let's say, let's say just the guys that moved are the ones that, that fired, right? These are the guys that fired yeah. the ones that didn't. Yeah. I mean, uh, as, as the German, I would probably be, I mean, as the German, if he just assault, assault advanced in the first turn, I probably wouldn't even fire. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, if he's just going to be cautious, then, then my only advantage is, you know, he's not figuring out where I am. I mean, he may start firing at some hexes just because I think he can, if you can fire at empty hexes, I think, in, in SK. Are right. you allowed to fire at empty hexes? Yeah, if they're hip, yeah, it's, they're just concealed. You, just, you have the half firepower. Right, I think it's area fire. So he's going to be hitting you at two plus whatever, you know, two plus twos or, or, or something like that. And, you know, and, and so, you know, maybe maybe you'll get unlucky and, and uh you know, or as a German, maybe you'll get unlucky and have to expose expose a unit or something like that. Right, but, right. Um, you know, but I would, um, you know, if if that was if that was the German, you know, if, if I saw that as the American, which would be my initial impulse as the American anyway, um, um, I would probably, as you say, just hold off as long as you can. Wait until he's literally adjacent to you, and then you know, and then fire. It's, you know, hope you hope you're not hope you're Excuse still me. hidden at that point. Right. Um. You know. Um. And and then um. You know, I would probably. You know, it'd be. I I have a the the question would be for me would be, 
um, would I give up the wall? You know, when do you give up the wall? When do you give up the, the, the hedge and you start right. falling back? Right. Um, you know, my, um, you know, if you, right. Because if you, if you move back, you know, let's say you decide, all right, I'm, I'm going to give up the wall. Now the American can just sit at the wall and fire at you. Correct. You're dead. If you give yeah, up the wall, dead. you have to give up the entire orchard. Yeah. I mean, you have to literally fall back. To, you'd have to run back, you know, to here. Yeah, you'd have to run back to the other wall. You'd have to come back over here. Oh, Absolutely. And, yeah, I mean, you'd have to. You'd, so you, so if you're doing that, you're you're running. You're you're basically, you know, so you're getting from, you know, so as you said, so you've got to figure out. All right, you know, can I, you know, you know, one, two, um, you know, one, two, three, you know, one, you know. Um, you know, at this point, you probably would pay. You'd probably get the four to get across, probably yeah. to get across at that yeah. point. Um, you know, and then these guys are going to advance, advance out. You know, but you're still, as you said, you know, I mean, if you're adjacent, you're going to take. Um, you know, you basically, as you said, you're giving up the orchard. And now the American you just kind of just continue just going boom. Right, boom, but boom, but boom. see that that's where this guy hidden there. Yeah, would be a would be a nasty surprise. Yeah, right. because because. Uh, remember, if, if he's got a short amount of units, if you break and break, if you break two guys and the next guy assault moves or smokes or whatever like that, then you simply final protect. And you could, you know, if you're subsequent for fire, if he moves again, which he might not, uh, at least you reduce that hex. Level. You you could break two guys easily with an eight chart, assuming you get ready to fire. And you're going to, you're probably going to break, but with a medium, you can route. I don't, obviously, putting the HMG up in the front is just get throwing it away. The HMG has yeah. got to be like in J5 or in the back just to just to cut off some bullshit, just to cut off this road. E either J5 yeah. or this one cuts off that road. You you're not defending G5 in, by any stretch of the imagination, I don't think, in this game yeah. at all. No, this no. guy, these guys down here hidden are defending G5. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, yeah, I like this nasty surprise here. Is he going to get munched? Yeah, probably. But these guys... These guys are going to stay alive because he's going to break two of them, and these guys are not going to fire on these guys. He's going to fire on him. Yeah. And uh, and this guy still got a plus two all from all those locations. This guy's got a plus two, plus three. So that's a stone building. G four is a stone building. Yeah. For all intents and purposes, G four is a stone building. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so uh, you don't need to be in the stone building because he's going to think you're that you're. He's going to think that your machine guns are in the buildings anyway. So that's his primary tunnel vision is machine guns are in the building. And right. if you could put them yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. He's going, be... get, he's going to get, yeah, he's going to get a kind of a rude awakening. Yeah. I mean, I just said, I, I like, I like the idea about the medium machine gun just hiding out in the orchard. I think that's a, uh, you know, I think I, th I, you know, that will, that will shock him, you know? And I, I think, and, or, I mean, unless he's just really, you know, obviously if he's a really sad savvy player he might go oh yeah okay all right that's, that's what about what about what about this mark check this out instead of these guys being right here you know they might be like right here put this guy right here and and, and in the anticipation that if the americans comes up here right yeah uh you you fire on him when they reach this point because you've got a six even so you've got the mach medium machine gun firing here eight eight with the squad Six with the machine gun, and then six with the machine gun down here. Six minus one, six even. Because most likely, I mean, 50% chance you can get two shots of that thing. Yeah. And uh, so I think that would be a nasty surprise. If he comes down here, you simply get the HMG the hell out of <laughs> just, just move well, it. I, <laughs> just, just, yeah, you just move it that. back here because it's got the same exact shot. You just got to run away. If he comes down here, you, you don't fire. You simply just run away. And because Probably. you're going to be out of LOS. And then you let these guys pound him, saying, "Oh, his his entire defense is gone, so I could just move up freely." And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, there is something to be said about yeah. I mean, how quickly you think you yeah, especially if he's stacked up up here, you probably, I mean, you're just gonna have to hope you can in fact get him back. I mean, you have to kind of see how because um, as I said, if you're here and he's jumping on the board, you know, so yeah, he ends up somewhere. You know, he ends up somewhere like you know. Let's just say, you know, just for yeah, that's if, he, if these guys are stacked up right here, right? And you guys, yeah, and so you got minus one, minus one on two on two units, 
on two yeah. particular units. So yeah, again, be simply because the Americans only have seven units, if you break three in one turn, half of his yeah. force is gone and he can't afford to advance because if your guys are hidden, then they're going to be taking, um, they're going to be taking four even shots. And uh, with six morale, they're, if these were six, six, sevens, that would be a complete different story. But yeah. with six morale, uh, in all honesty, if they if they assault, if they if they do the assault advance, what you do is you do you do the assault move, and then you drop smoke. The next guy, assault move, drop smoke. Assault move, drop smoke. So you have a wall of smoke, and then the other guys can just you know one two three into the smoke. They just they just leapfrog into the smoke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the next turn, that they they could assault move by dropping smoke and moving into it. Drop smoke. Drop smoke, move into it. These guys get one, two, three, and then you know, or whatever, wherever there's not smoke. I think that's that's the the key in getting across the open ground, is the assault smoke, assault smoke, assault smoke. Um, okay. Yeah. Because most likely the Americans, the Germans are going to anticipate them moving, and they want to get that minus two shot. So if you can if you can drop that smoke, then it, it, it all that's gone, and um, then they can actually make their move. So. Right. Tough one. It's a, it's a, it's a, I mean, I was looking at this. I was looking at his replay, uh, John's replay, and just seeing how, seeing how his game developed, and mm -hmm. um, just looking at it, it's like, okay, where, 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 where would you want to do something differently in this sort of thing? Um, uh, I mean, because like up here we have concentration of force, right? Down yeah. here we have concentration of force. You know, the eight zero, the eight zero. You just uses a speed bump, to be honest with you. Uh, where I mean, obviously you want him to rally, but uh, you know I, I I like this position right here a lot, a lot. Even for the the medium can move back here, and that's a yeah. pretty decent spot. I mean that's going to be eight, that's going to be eight firepower uh, just from the machine gun, and uh, never stack it. No, nobody stacks. Everyone's got to be apart from one another. Everyone's got to be away, you know. And so yeah, well yeah yeah yeah, but yeah, you have to cover as much. As much ground as you can so it was interesting that they just let you do all the half squads no 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so yeah. let's say let's say let's say that falls what happens let's say you break let's say three squads are broken uh these guys are back here right let's say we got an eight zero just here just for the calorie potential he's made it up here you know this sort of situation let's say these right. two guys so break. Now and we've got we got nine minus one. Let's just say for whatever, for whatever reason, it's something like this. Uh, and these guys break. They're probably just going to low crawl. They're probably uh, let's assume it's the Americans. So low crawl there. He just advances there. And then um, you know this guy staying alive is going to be pretty pretty rough. Let's say he breaks. And then he's going to have to route. Nearest cover would be one two. Three. Five, seven, one, one, three, five. This would be the nearest cover, but he could ignore that because that's no further away from that unit than where he is now. So he could just freely run back. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he can go wherever he wants to at that point. One, two, uh, five, six. You know, at that point, you can run your leader back there later. Because again, he's going to be taking the point blank shots with the two four sevens, and that way at least you'll get your medium up and running again. Again, you don't need to be in the buildings because here you can route all these areas. You can route behind an orchard or something, simply because right. it costs so much to go across. You're really nothing's really within range of routing yeah. distances, and yeah. uh, and the rest of the units are going to be in line of sight. And most of the time, if you're aligned with the J five, it's not going to be any further typically from an enemy unit that's probably going to be in your LOS. So you're free to just kind of route not into traps. And uh, there's only, honestly, there's only nine rally points the Germans have anyway in this scenario. And you don't want to be caught up here because you're just dead. Any, you, if you're up there, you die. Right. Yep. You, want to, yeah. you want to stay where, where you want to defend because you're going to have the other guys in front. So if those yep. guys break there and then let's say he advances something like this. And let's see, this guy goes over here. So that's the next turn there. And assuming this guy is an open here, the next turn, like if you could break two units a turn, once you once you reach the once you reach the 
unleash and let it go. I think the two four sevens up in the front probably going to break one unit at least. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. that, that's I mean with a six firepower on a on a six morale unit point blank, that's almost almost a guarantee. You know, uh, it's a very good chance of you breaking somebody. And then the HMD down here, I mean, obviously, you pop, you start popping. Um, and these units. Yeah, yeah, I said, yeah, you, you just hope you get raid. And, and obviously, yeah. but, you know, I assume the American then would probably be turning his attention to you, to the HMG. That's probably the first right. thing he's going to out. Um, would you, know, you, so simply would you oh. consider one of these units down here? To do some tricky bullshit, I, w I would consider using one of these units at least to to force his units further away. And I might I might consider something like this, Get, put him in an LOS. It may not be the best idea because he's going to be rotting up to a seven zero. I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe just to get him just to shoot on him to keep them DM'd. keep them DM the entire time. Mm. You know they're not going to survive long. If but if these units turn and fire on him, they're not firing on a front line. And if he breaks, he can go uh, one. Two, wow, wow. Uh, this isn't even within six, so at that point he could just he could just go back. Oops, sorry. Yep. He could just go back, but that would keep this bullshit DM'd, and he'd have to he'd have to route further away. And again, you go over this. That's three movement factors, which is almost a movement phase. So. Yep. And then and then yep. he'd be okay up there, but uh, I think that would be kind of that would be kind of tricky. I don't think the standard. Uh, the standard um, just in his face. I think you need a trick. You need to be where he doesn't think you are going to be and then unleash everything on him. And uh, I think avoiding the buildings, uh, at least initially, uh, is a good idea. Because the problem is, is once you reach J7, and if you break, you can't route. I mean, you have to stay there. There's, yeah. there's no routing from that location. Because... You're going to be interdicted, so you'll have to low crawl. And if you low crawl, he's just going to annihilate you with the rest of his firepower. Like if he reaches this position, there's no yeah. low crawl. There's no low crawl capability at that point. Yeah. You know, you just. Uh, I guess technically you could kind of route over here. One, two. That's probably an LOS right there. One, two, three, four, five. But you, I mean, but this is closer. Yeah. So I mean, what do you, what do you do? One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess actually go probably one, two, three. Four or five, because this is now seven hexes away from him. Right. But yeah, uh, I think being in the buildings, especially this one, um, you don't need to be in there. If if everybody like lines up over here, shit. I mean, that's all. The, they still have to cover the open ground. Even a guy down. Yeah. 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 It's an interesting idea. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's still. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, he's going to probably expect that you are in the building. Right. Exactly. At least some, yeah. of, and that's where if you have a couple guys that aren't, that aren't, or aren't revealed, which are essentially remain hidden, he probably thinks you're probably still going to be in the building. Plus, you hey, know, well, actually, this is actually kind of interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure. If we were, if we were setting up, um, what have you got? You've got. Hold on, let me let me take a look. Um, you've got. You got six. I don't know. That's. I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking about, you know, um, maybe put the two three sevens here, the two like two two three sevens, and maybe the medium machine gun here. You know, because you don't need like a huge amount of range at this point. Go ahead, and move. Go ahead, and move, Mark. I don't know. Throw more where you want to. Uh, let's see. What do we got? We got yeah. So. Um. So something like that. Back to kind of our two, my initial kind of two, four, seven idea down here. Um, uh, that's the medium, right? Medium with the um, say medium with the let's unbreak him. Yeah. So he's out. Elite. And he said he's there for a nice surprise. Um, maybe the eight zero is not there. Maybe he's here. Um, but this idea about having kind of the two, four sevens almost back here. Um, oh, I meant where you retreat to when you retreat to not. Well, set I, don't, up I, don't, I, don't, 
I'm not so sure. It may not. I mean, it'd be kind of an interesting surprise if if he decides to. So he starts running across this way. You pop these guys open. All right. Start hitting them. Two minus yeah. twos. Yeah. At least even even maybe like up in here as well, where he just he's not going to expect you to set up there. Yeah, you know? I mean, I don't know. I mean, um, I mean, I'd probably then, be a little bit more like this, um, maybe. You know, that you, way, he gets this building, he's trying to come across this way. Yeah, because if he starts going like this and wants to go uh, this okay. way to get over here, he runs yeah. right into a unit and bounces in the open. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is a better idea. I mean, that's just the, and then you can reveal right. one, and then he can move the other guy. Stop. He's gonna fire. Then you move him back. He breaks, and then you keep him hidden until he does the same thing again. <laughs> and then you blast him with you. Remember, yeah, I, it's chopping yeah. up his. You don't want his twelve firepower stacks at all. You want to split him up as much as possible. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, as I said, I, I do kind of like your idea about about um, you know. Yeah, that would be a real nasty surprise. This is this I, is yeah, totally for top would, defense. This yeah, would you be would a nasty not, surprise. You would not be expecting this. I mean, so this is like uh, you know two four seven. HMG and the eight minus one here. Yeah. Um, this guy here, and then fine. You give, I don't know, maybe you either give, you know, this guy the LMG, or you give, you know, um, you know, this guy the LMG. I don't know. You know, you do something, or, or as you said, maybe even this guy the LMG. Yeah, I would do. I would that. do. I would do the LMG. Maybe the LMGs up here, but uh, yeah, one of these guys back here. If that's the situation, I would have mm -hmm. to put a guy in E10. Uh, that's the only. If this is here, you need to protect his ass from getting surrounded. Okay. And uh, if 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 you have a if you have a stupid seven zero, where is he? Let's say you got yeah. something like this going on, right? He comes in here. He goes one, two, three and a half, four and a half, five, six. You know, um, a seven and a half, and he's here in the advance phase. And then this guy is, this guy off. is is stuck because the only thing he can do is jump over the wall. <laughs> and then shoot that way, which actually wouldn't be bad, but uh, but this is the problem <laughs> back here, and so this yeah, would stop that yeah. bullshit, and that, and that and that would stop this. I don't care if he dies, but that stops that, so he can come back over here, and then he knows, oh shit, HMG, I can't just go walk into the room with him, and uh, and then he'll oh, still cover this. But yeah, that that's gambling. That's gambling on on whether he's going to go that way or not. But yeah, I kind of this. I kind of like that. I kind of like this early because if you punch him in the face early, sort of like uh, what Keith got done in John's game last time, where he got hammered by that FFE, he got punched in the face early, and that might be enough. Uh, you need time in the scenario as, as the Germans, and you need to buy time. You need to buy turns, and yeah. uh, because the Americans, yeah. as we saw, the Americans just just. Assault move, advanced phase, the entire way to the game. Assault move, smoke, advanced phase. Assault move, smoke, advanced phase. And if yeah. they run, if they move as a full giant mob, um, you're going to be hard. You're you're going to be hit with twelve plus two shots every single location, sure. and yeah. uh, it's going to be you're rough. Right. Yeah. yeah, eight plus yeah, eight plus twos in the advanced yeah, eight plus twos in the advanced advanced fire phase, and then yeah. twelve plus two in the fire phase. This actually, I, actually, I like your LMG down here. To be honest. And um, yeah. the only yeah. reason is, is if he does his bullshit, this will be a six minus two right there in the open instead of a four yeah. minus two. And then you can sustain fire again. On, well, actually, it's only one. But I, I would, I would, uh, yeah, I would, yeah. I just, I don't, I don't even. Do you need, yeah. do you need the range? I don't know. I, I don't know if you need to do that or not because you, at that point, once you reveal and break him. You either just walk back or just go up here and then advance phase there. So I don't know something. You'd have to yeah. figure out what you want to do with this unit. Um, at that point, if, if if he's here, then I would probably move him. I would probably move him up in this direction, just to uh, DM any continue to DM any units that are going to be behind the bocage that you're not going to be able to shoot at. Oh, okay, so right, so if he decides, you're right, if he goes where you, where you expect him to go and on mass in the orchard, then yeah, then then he's right. free and it, he can start trying to, yeah. you know, oh. any units that break when they get into the orchard. Yeah, that he could be back here, uh, pretty much out of the line of sight of most of these units and anybody yep. in the back. And the, plus, it gives him the range that he could reach guys, even, you know, up the uh, two plus three, it's gonna be off the chart. So if they're behind the bocage, they're safe. 
but if they're behind the bocage they have to do a run and run over here and that's where i like that lmg right there at that point you could pop you could pop them you could theoretically even pop at long range if these guys retreat well if they retreat here i don't i, th I save it there at that point oh yeah yeah no i yeah. mean yeah that way you said he decides he wants to come around yeah i kind of i kind of like that this this looks i, I like I, I like this lmg your your half squad stomp up here your machine gun hidden there and your eight zero hell i might actually put your um eight zero down here just to go three six and then just yeah, advance this guy back yeah yeah and then run yeah. him and then run just to move him there maybe or 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 put this guy yeah. just the only yeah the only problem i have with that is you said is yeah there's, there's, there's now no leader up here yeah that, you need that, a leader up there yeah that that's a that's a bold move if you want to pull that off yeah um, I'm not sure you'd want to spend the eight zero. I mean, yeah, the eight zero would basically. I mean, yeah, maybe the. I mean, question would be, it's okay. So fine, you as you said, you get. But um, but like say, if you can move him there and let like say let's let's say let's say these units. Four and a uh, half six. Yeah. Let, so let's say these units it. move back. This is this is what I did. Let's say this guy's got the LMG for whatever reason, and these units move up, and they're in this position. Let's see, break. Break right. Again, yeah. look at look at what we're looking at. He's not going to expect this guy here. He thinks that's going to be here or here, one hundred percent of the time. Yeah, one hundred percent of the time, most players are going to believe there's an HMG in one of those buildings. One hundred percent, the HMG is in the building. Yeah, right. Actually, the HMG. Oh, actually, can't you can't set up HMG hit right there. But let's say this this was the case here. The seven zero is just oh, floating here. Yeah, you can't set up there. Yeah. Let's okay. just say yeah. let's just say something like this, right? Again, you've got. You've got, you've got an eight, eight, uh, and a six. Let's say you break three of these guys. Yep. Right. Or at that point, I might, I might consider shooting this guy because that's going to be a six minus one. Mm. And then goes. I, thought I would take the six minus one shots right here. I would ignore the twelve plus three because he's going to get twelve firepower on you anyway. I would blast, yep. blast, and then, uh, you know. Just blast the shit out, blast the shit out of everything. And if you get rate of fire, you're golden, baby. You, if you get rate yeah. of fire with one of those units, um, that maximizes your firepower because of his six morale. Uh, I, I can't see any 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 fewer than three of his units breaking. I yeah, as you said, especially if the you know the HMG is opening up from there and the L and the MMG is opening up there in the same defensive fire phase. Yeah, you know, you'll just you, yeah that that would that would that would get his attention. All right, because his nine minus one is going to be up the top, right? He's not going to be down here. I don't yep. think his nine minus one is going to be down here uh, because you know he's he's going to be with the the medium machine guns, and uh, yep. if he does something like this, uh, you could rip those guys, uh, especially in defensive fire phase, because the next phase you can move, you could then prep fire, or you could just simply assault move over here and then get cover, and now only one unit can fire on you. Yep. And yeah, then you could yeah. then you could advance fire at a one minus one, which isn't you know better than nothing, you know. And then he's still stuck because you can see throughout the whole orchard. But yeah, that's just to protect yourself, and then you could move back later. Um, yeah, I kind of I kind of like this to bust him in the face to see how far you know these if these guys will break. You know, they'll probably route there. Uh, oh my gosh! Anyway, these guys are broken. You know, if you break this guy, they're going to route back here. Well, he's going to low crawl. Uh, yeah. He can just, he can actually, he can just route back to the leader there. But now, I mean, again, your half squads are back here. If he breaks, he simply goes one, two, and then he just comes over here, and then four. Again, that's where the eight zero, I think just put the eight zero in the orchard over here. Because all those guys can make it. If he breaks here, that's one, two, five, six. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, yeah, I mean, yeah, this one's a little more, as I said, this one's a little more, I mean, um, hold on, if we get back to here. Actually, actually, um, this, would, actually this would be five. If he's here, that's five. So that would be your destination. At that point, you might you might have to put him here. But I don't want to route the G5. I just don't want to go to G5. I mean, I guess you could at that point because your HMG is right here. I guess you right. could set that up. Because now your HMG is protecting the flank for these. He can go here. He's protecting point blank, and nothing's moving down. None of this bullshit's happening. So he can yeah. be rallied the next turn. I think that's. I think that's perfectly safe. 
to use this as a rally point in this sort of situation. Yep. Because and, you yeah. because if you're in F2, I love F2, but this is five away, unfortunately, and it's further away from an enemy unit. So, but um. Right. So yeah. So he ended up going there, and you don't want him to go there. That's for sure. Right. Um, you say once he's there, then then the Americans just going to cut him off and and take him out of the game for the most part. Yeah. So yeah, I think maybe you're right. I think maybe yeah, you've got to set up there. All right. And and the thing about that there is like say okay, once he's in this position, he's vulnerable to Americans here, but he can't move here because you've got your HMG at the right. six minus one right in front of him. He just he can't move there. So this is this is going to be fired upon maybe from here at a one, two, three, that's a six. That's a plus six. Yeah, six plus six, yeah. yeah. And then you just drop these guys, you know, back here or something like that. Uh, and uh, that's, I think that I think that could work pretty damn, I would hate to attack that as the Americans. I mean, you again, smoke, advance, smoke, advance, smoke, advance. But I mean, that's, that's right. so no modifiers, is, yeah. But but if you but as you say if you've gotten reasonable roles and he's got you know three squads broken you know that's going to probably take him a turn to get them right. back in motion again right he, turn yeah you know, now 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 you've got one less turn and if you you know and if you manage to break break up a movement phase again now he's starting to feel the pressure of time right you know, um you know i mean it's still it's still not necessarily as you said, not necessarily going to be easy for the German, but um, but he might be, you know, but the American might start to think about, about you know, you know, having to maybe take more chances to try to try to try to get at, you know, this building in here. Right. Um, yeah, that's actually kind of in, yeah. And let's say let's say he splits them, like let's say he does something like I would do, split your force up, right? Look, put four guys up there. He brings three guys Ooh. down here, and if our guys were set up in the same location. You know, think of what we got. Think of what we have then, right? Think of what we have then in terms of dominating the American. We let him do the same thing, right? And then we blast them. Maybe one guy breaks yeah. or something like that. He goes back one hex. You know, nine minus ones with him. That sort of bullshit. These guys move up, and then they just run away. Still, you know, and they advance over here. This guy goes. You know, he advances over here. We leave him there, and then he does the same sort of thing: assault move. And guess what? This guy yeah. could then blast him freely, right? HMG stays hidden yeah. still because these guys are down here doing whatever they're doing, right? He needs to be aware of these guys, and he yeah. blasts these guys. And if they break, you know, the HMG might consider, okay, uh, these guys are down here, uh, defensive fire phase. I could open up, probably double break them and kill. You know, well, they, they're going to have eight morale when they break, so the double break might be a little problematic. But uh, and then he could, right. and then he could start moving. Hell, at that point, he could just move across the street, and then the, and then the same sort of thing. He could fire two hexes deep, right, with no yep. modifiers. You know, three hexes deep with plus one, which is not bad. And so, uh, right, and, and then the top half is just decimated. You know, because you beat the shit out of him. And when those guys break, guess what happens to two four sevens? One, two, three, four. They go back to where they started the game. <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah, that's. And so yeah, that would be—it's like a little I'm slinky. You go, brink, brink, brink. You bring him into it's sort of, like, and, that's, and this is the only reason I thought of this is because maybe, uh, because what John did, he says, okay, I'm going to move my guys here to bring him into me, to bring him into the. It's like the ARs were essentially hidden units, which he attacked you at. You're doing the same thing here. You want to bring them into the hidden units, and then uh, yeah. to, to just wallop at them. You know, Americans have range. Americans have range over all your units. As soon as he finds out where the two four sevens are, he's gonna stay at a five hex range. Because if I stack units yeah. up over here, I don't care. You're gonna break eventually. You know, eighteen firepower plus five. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not a. Uh, that's a five or six. No, sixteen is five. Well, the minus one leader. It's a six, five or six. You know, that's with no. Yeah. I mean, and then if you if you stack two mediums, that's a twenty chart plus plus four seven seven's a morale check. You know, through all this orchard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Eventually, yeah, the Americans going to overpower you. Yeah, and that's and that's just that's just with two units. That's just twenty. 
that's just 20 plus 4. That's a 7 for a morale check. And, uh, yeah. you know, he breaks, and the yeah, other guys can just shove up on him. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like your little two four sevens. And then, but I think that I think the medium, I, I the only reason I'd say is simply because I really don't like the the half squads with the lights because you fire one or the other, you can't fire them both. You oh can, yeah, yeah, you know that's the problem I have with the LMGs. But the LMGs is pretty much for range. But that's why I stacked the medium with this is that he's got eight and eight, so he's he's extremely strong in that sort of aspect. And the subsequent first fire another eight, you know. Um, so nothing's surviving when it's coming next to this four six seven, and then if you get the eight minus one supporting the four six seven, uh, America's gonna have a bad day. And uh, you know, at that point, you know if he's got if he's got units up here, and these guys are broken back over here, and you've got a two three seven in the vicinity, he simply he simply does this bullshit. And this he's out of LOS for sure. the nine minus one. And then these guys are going to be yeah. in a world war. And he just all he does is harass these guys the rest of the game. Because these guys are split. These yeah. guys are less likely to going to be over here. They might be. I don't know. Uh, I would put them as far away yeah. from this edge as possible. Yeah. Because their morale. I would have to push bottom. Plus, you've got two open ground hexes and you've got some rally terrain. So, that's interesting. Yeah. It's, a, it's interesting the way it develops both sides. But I think the, I think the orchard is the key. Um, I mean, you could do the same sort of damn thing down here, um, but there's no there's no wall on this side. Over here, you if the Americans come, if the Americans throw everything on the bottom, right? You've got this wall here right. protecting your shot, even long range shots. They still have to come here, but but if you go yeah. down here, you've got no shots protecting yourself against the Americans that are lined up over here. I don't think yeah. you can. I think you can only defend the bottom. With just a ragtag force just to slow him a little bit and jump back to the next bocage slow him jump back slow him jump back that's all you could do i'd even jump back yeah. to here i wouldn't i wouldn't go to the building i would simply jump back to here because you got these guys protecting this you know um mm -hmm. I, I that's just my opinion i mean you could it, it just split them up because you know you don't want you don't want you don't want that situation in this build i guess you could but but uh, again, you've got no, you got nowhere to go here. At least, yeah, I don't know. You don't want it to come to that point. You want to slow him up enough where, where uh, his firepower will just completely overwhelm you, and uh, break up the fire groups. Whatever you need to do, because he's going to be firing at four firepower, well, six firepower in the advance phase adjacent. So, you've got to break right, those yeah. bad boys. You've got to break them. So, um, I think it's pretty interesting. I think it's a. You know, I watched the scenario. I watched John's replay of the scenario, and uh, again, like I can say it just caught me where, hey, he's got he's got hip units, and uh, hip units are really kind of like unknown uh, in terms of SK usage because it's like a concealment. But um, I think approaching the scenario in terms of what he did last game and what we're talking about this game is bring them bring them into your next line of. Uh, essentially your trap you want to pull him back into a trap and uh yeah be because he's he's going to think the h the hmg and mmg are in these buildings here lmg maybe here hmg yeah. i mean it's, it's, it's like an s3 where you have those guys we get that, you know, that machine gun set up in that open ground building in, in the middle of nowhere uh it's the same sort of thing sure. they'll, they'll always put them right there and uh yeah i like this i like this uh, i like this location right here it's a, it's a building it's a stone building you have two stone buildings right there from any yeah. from from any of these locations, two stone buildings. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until he literally, I mean, unless he decides to go like into E five or something like that. But as I said, if you got the unit right there, then he's not going to E five. <laughs> right? It's going to be yeah, uh, it hurt. It's going to be a world of hurt. And even your LMG, yeah. if, if we're right here, he can still just fire through the uh, the grain field. Uh, yeah, that's that's funny. That would be funny. Yep. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I would probably, yeah, I think you're probably right. I think the idea is to, um, yeah, you, you do want to use hips, hips for surprise purposes. You, you definitely, and as I said, you, yeah, you definitely don't want to put them in a place where he's just going to expect them to be because what's the point then? Right. Um, you know, you know, you gotta, you gotta try to surprise him. You know, that's where I try to like, you know, try to set up my guns, you know, my hidden guns, you know, try to, try to pick a spot where you just don't think 
you know, that's you that's useful, but you just don't think he's thinking that's going to be there, you know, and um, you, right. you, you got to catch him by surprise and yeah. hope that you get yeah. those good shots off. Right. You got to hope those. Right. Good yeah. Shots. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so as I said, fortunately, that that um, um, George and I were playtesting one of his scenarios, and I think I managed to do that, do that pretty well. You know, I just put his gun, put my two AT guns in a spot where he wasn't expect. I don't think he was really expecting them to be, and they got relatively lucky, but actually it ended up being the flanking ATRs, which actually saved the game. Um, wow. You know, he just kind of forgot they were there. Yeah, the ATRs, my God, they were actually useful. It was amazing. Um, you know, because he was so concerned about the, about the AT guns, he... I think he kind of forgot the ATRs and just left me with nice shots with the ATRs. So. Wow. Uh, I got a little lucky and managed to manage yeah, That's to, okay. 12 hex range is huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. That especially is extremely if, far. If he's going to give you, you know, rear shots on armored cars, sure, you know, go ahead and take it, you know. Um, you know, especially if, especially if you're stacked with your minus two leader. You know, you're gonna, you're probably gonna hit them. You know, yeah. after that, it's a, it's a crapshoot. But you know, at least you're gonna hit them. You know, and you know, someday you, you know, hopefully you get lucky and you and you kill them. And that time I did. So you know, good deal. Okay, that's a good deal. Exactly. Uh, but like you say, you had him in a good position to do that. And, right. Uh, yeah, because yeah. he was so concerned about. As I said, he was so concerned about. Now suddenly, this AT, the AT guns popping up, and then he just kind of was trying to get around them, and then the the ATRs managed to managed to cover the flanks and. and, and Take take out the take out another vehicle that they need to do when the game. So, and I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I, th I think I think I think in terms of like, just in terms of you know tactics in general, I think it's you know hip units. Yeah, you, you know, you, you definitely use them for surprise. You know, use them for. I mean, I like your idea about baiting a trap. You know, um, you know, and 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 let your enemy walk into it, and then just suddenly you know punch him in the nose. Yeah. And well, um, I definitely got that know, from John and, last game, <laughs> you know, because he but, it worked out well. But yeah, yeah. but that's general. The general overall idea is 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 uh, I, you know a lot of players will 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 fire first and you know just to reveal the units like you know you know, especially at six brow uh, it, it helps more. So but yeah anyway go ahead sorry yeah but um no 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 that's no I no, go ahead yep. but, uh, but um, yeah I, I like the yeah, way. No. Yeah, John, this... I like the way John and Keith played their last game, and like I say, that that gave me the idea for this sort of uh, you know bait, you know, drop back and bait them, and um, yeah, and, uh, and you, know, I think you definitely have to take into account the the routing, as long as you are in a situation where you keep those woods away from you, at least H zero, you want to keep H zero away from your potential routes. Um, yeah, yeah. And that way yeah, you can run back yeah. to the other orchard. That that's the trouble. That this is the trouble spot. This is the danger zone right here. And um, you know that I didn't realize that if you if you're an F two, well, if you're an F two and you break, you're not going to go here anyway because most likely, you know, if you break these units, you can't get there anyway because you'd have to go around, and then that would be right. too much. One, oh. two, five, seven. At that point, you can't route to it, and then you'll be free to route pretty much wherever you want to. Yeah, so, so it may not be quite as much of a concern, but you better make sure, as you said, you better make sure that, you know, you, you better make sure the American, right. American is an F1 for yeah. you, you know? At that point, you let him move a guy up here and shoot I these guys so you yeah. can't route there because if you break everyone up front and he breaks you, then you go there, then you're screwed. You know, that's a, that's yeah. a, you want, you want, you want a guy up here or you, you want to, if you guys right there, yeah, that's cool. fine. That's yeah. fine. But, uh, yeah, so you almost want to be in F1. Yeah, so you almost want to kind of set, just set up your two units here and, and leave F1 open for that reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, just that way, as you said, he, 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 uh, he dives across the wall. He thinks, oh, yeah, he's, he's fine. You actually give him – actually, that might even help to bait the trap a little bit more. If, he's, right. if he kind of starts on the edge and comes in, he says, oh, yeah, this is great. The wall's clear. Boom. Now you're just, now you're just blasting him. Yeah. You know? And, um, you know, you say, oh, right, then you know, you... if you blast him here, right? If you blast yeah, well, yeah, him he... here, he routes there. Yeah. And you just killed a unit because you're, you're retreating half squads, then just yep. go here next turn and he's dead. Yep. And then they just yep. run back. <laughs> yeah. Let him take F1. You can have yeah, F1. I don't want that shitty hex. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
that might be yeah this is all be. trash yeah because these guys are hidden he's hidden yep. and uh if this this if these guys are right here that's that's you know it's not getting closer uh technically it is you might want to get further away i don't know you'd have to do something if you could break him uh you want to and if you guys could move him you want to move these guys out of i3 so he right. has to route there and then advance them back right. so now he's yeah. trapped yeah he's if trapped. he's here he could ignore it but move if this guy breaks move these guys next and salt move them right there i don't care what's firing at you from this direction you know nothing's going to shoot yeah. at you that's not going to have targets in front of him assault move him there assault yeah. move him back here and then move him forward just to just to trap him and then he's then he's screwed yeah, yeah that's huge the hell let him stack two guys up there and then blast yeah. the shit out of him yeah. oh my god he would lose two units right then if he had two guys there yeah 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 that would be that would that that would be that would be certainly a nice trap you know Whew, um, man that, that see how tricky trap. so i didn't even did see that deal all i saw is i don't want my medium here because i don't want to go there it's like well well give him f to yeah. one yeah and then if he stays yeah. there, you can't you can't route through there. You can at that, that point his presence his presence saves you and kills yeah. him at the same time. Yep. That's yep. that's crazy. That is so crazy. Using the yeah, difference that, right there. I didn't even yeah, see that. that. Hmm. Yeah, that that would that, that would certainly be yeah, that would certainly be a trap. Yeah, I mean that that would be a trap. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, he and walks in thinking he's all set and you just you yeah if you get reasonably reasonably lucky yeah two, yeah as you said yeah two squads are out of the game oh my god that's huge and then you know uh i don't know just uh, i don't know how it would develop at that point splitting the forces in that case if that if that's our if that's our setup and scenario splitting his forces i think i think this is i think this guy alone and that little half squad trap the half squad fire and then run back absolutely destroys yeah. him absolutely just will destroy him this whole top side's gone and he has to win with his bottom side right which is gonna be very hard for me yeah do. because because we're not giving him any bocage walls he's yep. not getting shit you know at that point throw your throw yeah. your throw your light machine gun back here or back here and now he gets to he gets to fire you know through these little areas right here hell he yep. might you know, he doesn't have LOS over here but at that point if he goes there you just adjust up he's got yeah, LOS to both of them yeah that's crazy yeah, I like that. I like that. I like this LMG. If if you could save him here, then here here is really good because it covers the entire bottom part of the map. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's the that's where the LMG yeah, gives you range. Yeah. Shit. At that point, yeah. at that point, I might consider putting both LMGs up top and just putting two a couple. Well, this hidden guy's right here. Putting the half squads and this guy right here. You know, whatever. Uh, just to get her six minus two and uh do we leave that one open yeah i'll we'll probably go something I, I don't know something like this yeah uh, you definitely want to leave that one whatever we want to do down there but um you know i kind of like that i i might want to you know you might want to go something like this and then pull them all back like we did before and yeah. then again yeah. if he sees this much firepower up here is this thing going to be there no way in hell this thing's in here yeah or here he's, yeah, he's probably, if we if we show this much firepower up in the front top and then just drop all this shit back he there's no way he's going to anticipate a, a unit in f2 and the, and the hmg right here at that point those guys drop back he moves right up there, yeah, and yeah. then he loses the entire top force wow yeah, yeah that'd be crazy that would be yeah, and then, yeah, the LMG right here is really good because yeah, because he covers he covers the HMG's backside right here. Um, at least that hex, you know, two two up one maybe. Right. Yeah. Or as you said, or he just moves into the building. You know, that would also help kind of cover. Oh right, and then and then so actually, I didn't even think about the fire group, the six six even, or six plus one, of one hex into the yeah. orchard, or one hex into the grain field. Same thing down here. That's six plus one. That's yep. not bad. It's not a bad shot. No. No, I mean, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you, six plus one. You know, half the time you're probably going to at least force them to force them to take a morale check. Yeah. 
I like this. Uh, I like this beanie up here because the end around. I like this yeah. guy, and this guy, like I say, this guy can come up and then take those guys out, and then just go and and then. Oh my God! Right, there's, yeah. there's so many ways you can do just trickster things in here. Yeah, uh, I mean, right. You're guarding against, you know, you're, yeah. I mean, I think, I think he, I think he does need to be there. Um, at least I feel he does, because he said to avoid that kind of end run right around here. Yeah, you know, Mark, maybe you want. To... You're so dastardly. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. I... I mean, yeah, you try. You try. I mean, as I said, I mean, you you basically have set up you you set up the basic trap. I'm just kind of refining it. Oh, um, that's nice. Yeah, I like <laughs> it. Owning <laughs> it and, uh, to, to a fine you know, a fine point. Um, but yeah, but as you said, yeah, that would be nice as you say because if those units end up there, yeah, just pop him, just un, un, unhip him, and boom, there you go. You're yeah. you're out. Yeah, if everybody's done, then you are uh, and exactly. You know. Yeah. You know, that would be that. Would Yep, oh. you're yeah, you're done. You're toast. You know, um, oh, yeah, that would be so you'd be crazy. Two, yeah, two squads, down, two squads down at the end of end of turn two, end of turn three. Yeah, you, then now you now you're beginning to get concerned. Yeah, yeah, you because know? because you probably you probably haven't broken that many of Germans or Amer or the Germans, and uh, you know if he's got his H if he, if half your squads are broken and the other guy two guys up here are dead, you know yep. you're, you're not going to win with three squads down here. Yep. That'll be crazy. Yeah. Yep. Very interesting. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Well Yeah, no. Yeah, I yeah, I mean I think this is yeah, this is um I don't know, I've often found that a lot of the SK scenarios can actually be kind of interesting in this sort of way, you know. This kind of does seem to set they, they you know, they do seem to be set up quite a bit to have multiple sort of multiple uh multiple avenues who's multiple like, like replayability i found a lot of the sk scenarios to be very very replayable yeah know, i think so is, too yeah which is yeah which is i think a tribute to the design i, I, I think they they actually yeah i mean they do actually see you know um you know as i say i don't have much experience with 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 asl so i don't you know i mean you know there obviously are going to be dud scenarios anywhere i mean when yeah, you've got yeah. a thousand scenarios you are going to be duds i mean yeah that's just the way it works um you know, but it does seem as if generally, you know, a lot of the SK scenarios seem to be very replayable. And I've, so far, I've like hardly hit a scenario yet where it's like, oh, God, I have to play. I, you know, even Beerville can actually be kind of interesting after leaving it alone for a while. <laughs> you know, right. and they got to it, you know, so. Um, right. you know, well, plus, so, plus you know, the, they, the, they the back... lack of, like I say, the lack of Chrome that you were experiencing in ASL. The lack of Chrome allows it to be a... Um, a, a simpler puzzle to kind of like attack. And you don't have to worry about all these ex these extraneous things having kind of yeah, random right. influences, like the snipers. The snipers just have a random influence uh, on the entire game. If you're moving your troops forward and there's some random thing, your entire front just stops. And so yeah. that's one thing I kind of like about SK is you don't have to worry about the, the, the snipers in the game. Um, to be honest with you, after the time I've been playing SK, uh, I think the snipers are a pain in the ass. A pain in the ass, yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I know some guys like them, but uh, when you're doing well and, and 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 just simply rolling a set of dice, and then can 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 completely destroy your plan by one shot, a random event, which I'm usually all for random events, yeah. but when you when you're playing uh, squad or starter kit or ASL, uh, all your game is based upon your planning. And if your planning is just, you know, thrown out the door from a random event, you know, I'm not talking about dice rolling and attacks. Those are random events, but something completely sure, that's right. not even game, that's not decision related. It's not decision related. Something completely out of the out of the blue um, uh, is disheartening. At you know, everyone's been screwed by the sniper at one point or another. But yeah, uh, I, I suppose that's just part of part 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 of the experience. Yeah, yeah. and so. Uh, uh, it, it, yeah, it's it's great. It's great when you're when you're on the when you're on the transmitting end of it. Your, your sniper wins the game for you, sort of thing. But yeah. but uh, but you know, as you said, yeah, just as often you're going to lose the, lose the game. Yeah, I I suppose yeah, I suppose there is something about SK being in that respect. You know, you you, you remove the chrome enough that you can just kind of concentrate a little bit more on kind of just the the pure kind of tactics of, right. of the game. Right. Know? Right. 
and 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 that does and, and obviously a lot of this stuff i mean a lot of this stuff would carry over into asl you know so this would be a good training ground from that standpoint absolutely absolutely i mean you know you still want to do the same basic things you want to lay traps you want to yeah. um you know get, get your get your opponent off guard you know you know catch him flat-footed yeah. uh you know, and, 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 you know, and this would give you some sort of like basic, you know, basic experience, you know, to kind of, you know, help you kind of, you know, you know, hone your skills without, um, you know, now, as I said, I admit that, you know, I mean, you know, when, when you go three dimensional, obviously it changes, you know, how you can set up traps in a, in a, in a vastly different way. Uh, right. The traps, yeah. The traps become a little trickier. Um, yeah. yeah absolutely, absolutely. By by all by all means, the traps become. Yeah. And uh, you know. and some maps now, when you have, you know, even on like Joseph three five one, where you've got the hill. Once you hit that second level hill, and you start seeing over shit, that's one thing. And then you and then you go into the, um, then you go into the uh, some of the like the scenario that I played with Steve the, um, the first scenario that we played together. I think it was Winter City. You know where you've got hills going up and they're going pretty steep and you've got like chasms and shit um it gets really at that point it reaches a certain breaking point based on your knowledge of the, of the los rules and movement things like that where you're sure. kind of fighting the game fighting yeah. the, the actual topography versus fighting your opponent and that becomes a really tricky tricky part there i mean we're kind of doing yeah. that here where we don't yeah. want to fight through the wheat field because we're kind of screwed. There's really not a lot of defense from a, a, a vertical attack. But the, uh, you know, if we're, if we're attacking from the top, at least we have part of that topography that we're using to advance ourselves. So the same basic concept of using the terrain to your advantage remains, except for it just kind of, now you just, okay, I know what the flat yeah. terrain can but get yeah, me. But you're not you know how does how does moving up hills, which essentially just slows your ass down by a lot, you have to add that factor in. I, yeah. and I, I, I like that. I like that um, uh, comparison, especially with a bocage here, where you know three movement factors that go across a bocage is pretty pretty crazy. It's a lot of movement factors, and yeah. uh, and it's three and a half if you go to the bottom. You're moving one hex down the bottom, so which the Americans I don't think mind yeah. too much anyway. I'd, I'd love to I'd love to see this played like and six different sets of people and uh you know that's probably that's one thing i think i should do is i think sh i should show, show up a challenge say hey let's play this scenario you know all the people you know match up with people and so on and so forth i mean i know john's played it he just played it now but anybody else that's watching the channel something like that play the scenario and then submit your logs and then we could we could look at all the logs and see how the hip has been used in each of the situations and how how traps were set or not set and just the different strategies at least the sk player is learning with the with the hidden with the hidden hip hip units because all of the germans are hip here and that's usually in a typical scenario usually have just a little handful of units that are hip yeah, like the Two, yeah one or two mmcs plus smcs yeah well. and so having everything hip here i mean shit he can literally have all of his units stacked up in this little area up here. So, I mean, pretty much they're all defending this one building. That's really all they really need to do, right? I mean, if the Americans come down here, he's, he's going to go, he's like, oh, where the hell is everybody? Oh, shit. That's everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, they're all freaking up here, hiding in the trees, you know, the climbing the trees. Yeah, and then, that, would, that would certainly not be the worst setup. I mean, you know. <laughs> right? I mean... How much firepower is just it's, it would be crazy because you would just reveal slightly and drop back and he moves up and these guys blow reveal slide drop back and then these guys blow I mean nothing surviving that if you if you reveal yeah. them intermittently the, all the Americans are dead all the Americans are dead I don't care what you say but um, that would be funny as hell I would just love that this is the sort of situation this is the sort of setup that kind of got me into thinking in my S three scenario where I set yep. all my conscripts right on the front, right, up, right in front of the trees. That's the yep. same yep. process here is this is viable because if he goes up top, you're, you're busted. He's you he, you destroy him. And if he goes bot, now you've got the bocage. Now you've got the terrain. You've got the defense and he's got shit. He's coming from down here. 
and yeah. you've, you've got all the you've got all the defense it's going to take him five turns to get back here he's got a he's got a front line that stuff and you just pop him and right uh, because the american what yeah so you say what's the american gonna be doing probably he's got said move advance move advance move advance yeah if he wastes like four turns getting to the back building and he's like where are you yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know, I mean, you know, at that point he's going to figure it out, and it's like, you know, I mean, it's going to be like, you know, it's like, oh, you know, now he's got to get back to that building, and then you just set up and you just blast him, you know, for yeah. a couple of turns. Oh, like, yeah. just, at that point, it's hold him off for like two turns, yeah. and uh, you know, and and um, yeah, that that even that setup is kind of yeah, it's bizarre, but it's it's kind of interesting. Yeah, and if worse becomes the worst, you can just set units right here, so you block the easy access. So he has to take three and a half, three and a half. Yeah, you blast one yeah. guy, he breaks, he dies. Who cares? You blast one guy, he breaks, he dies. You know, you slowing him up, and then he thinks more guys going to be down. That would be funny as hell. I, I would just, I mean, I think that would be a great challenge is to get everyone together. You know, we discuss a scenario that everyone goes through it, and I'll put that on the on the at the at the end discussion. And this discussion right here is is um, for the viewers that watch this get together with a player and and run through it, and then submit your submit your uh log files and then we could uh, we could compare and contrast log files just based on this strategy and how effectively some people trap people or how effectively american attacked you know whether he yep. split went bottom or went top well as you said it'd be it'd be interesting to say it, it would be interesting to see just how many different variations you end up you know as i said because i i you know the one time i i was another time i was play testing what interested me was was I was um, showed up showed up at um, at the um, um, at somebody uh, Chuck he sets up this kind of monthly monthly just play session basically and I ended up being like oh okay we're gonna play test the scenario for the New England Volunteers and um, and so myself and an opponent both of which were you know just barely ASL literate okay mm. you no know, both the SK but barely ASL literate. We were playing on one board, and two other much more experienced players had set up the same scenario. And literally, with even within one turn, it was like two completely different scenarios. Right. Like, like had completely done. Like, I mean, I did like a hard right flank to try to try to flank around to get to the buildings I needed to get at. The other guy was just straight up the middle, you know, just pound away. And so it was like just interesting to see even in one turn, like you know, just two different people just coming up with two radically different different attack strategies for the same scenario with the right. same board, you know, yeah. and, and it's kind of interesting from that standpoint, because people can see, yeah, there really are just the multiple ways to handle this. And, and, um, you know, so it, there'd be that one. I mean, the only one, the other one that I would think of that you might want to take a look at, as I said, was, I mean, unfortunately that one may be, a, this one I think is, is a better scenario because again, it's just infantry. Yeah. Uh, the, um, the S 44, I think, is um unfortunately brings in the armored brings in armored cars so people would have to know the vehicle rules in order right to play that right scenario. yeah that would be that would be much tougher but something like this you said like anybody who's got sk1 well as you can see taking different approaches on what you want to defend and how you want to defend can really lead to dynamic situations in the game you know most players i believe will put the hmg in one of the stone buildings Use that information to your advantage. Mostly everyone's going to anticipate. Mostly everyone's going to anticipate that HMG to be in one of those stone buildings. Don't give him that anticipation. The bocage is plus two terrain and any hindrance going to that bocage will make it plus three, which is equivalent to a stone building. So as you saw the unit right in the center, right above that first stone building in the middle, fired on anyone from the orchard, he's going to effectively be in a stone building. So use that terrain to your advantage. Understand how the modifiers come to your advantage to give you the same defense as a stone building. Once you're in those stone buildings, the Americans are going to have, you know, occupation of all of those Bokash hex sides you're firing at two firepower plus two you simply lose you simply lose that scenario you, you this isn't going to happen it's the americans crushing you is what's going to happen 
So therefore, you've got to hit him when he's at most vulnerable. No plus two. Two plus two is not an option. Two minus one, two even, four even, eight even, 16 even, six minus one. Those are all the shots that we discussed. We're looking at six morale units. You don't need much to break them. You just need to be able to shoot at them and get a result. A two plus two, six plus one is not very good. You need to get those shots of opportunity. And notice, not a lot of terrain to rally in. You know, the last discussion that we popped up is setting the Americans up to come in that side to get trapped so he has to route to those woods. If he goes that way, sort of routing forward, then we can trap him with other units that might be in the position. And you want to keep those units in position to be able to make that move. So anyway, lots of things discussed. I really enjoyed the discussion. I think it was very enlightening, at least from my viewpoint, in terms of an SK standpoint. But anyway, um, I challenge whoever watches this, you know, play this scenario. If you have this scenario available, if your buddy has it available, play, play the game, set it up, submit your replay, and we can compare and contrast four or five different sets of replays that you guys have, and we can discuss your opinion. Say, hey, I did this because I want to channel him here. Oh, I did that because I really didn't care about the bottom. I want to channel him there, and this is why. I think this is a scenario that's perfect for discussion because the objectives are clear, concise, and very visible, but the approach to defending them can be very different. So I hope you enjoyed this, syn this synopsis of hidden initial placement in starter kit and specifically this scenario. So I challenge you to create your game, come and share it with the other players here on the ASL forum and the ASL skills discord channel. And we can discuss it. I think we'll have some great discussions. We'll see you next time on Tactical Tuesday.